His name is Tim McTire, former NFL and BYU standout and a guy that's been paying close attention to what the Cougars have been doing. Tim, it's great to have you back on the show. How are you? Man, I am great. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to be on, man. It's been a while. I haven't been on since not the 96 media day, man, in person, live. Yeah, yeah. It's, this is long overdue. And you know what? We need to set the tone properly and show you something that I'm sure you're very aware of. But because it's 90s day, we've got some throwback pictures and throwback posters, one featuring you. So I, w- I, want, I want to show this to you. And then we have some questions about you standing next to the big tire. Yes. Okay. First and foremost, who's the uh, guy who's in, the, in tires? the tires? Who's in there? I'm not sure who it is, but he was supposed to be playing a San Diego State player. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Hey, what do you remember about that day in that photo shoot? I remember them coming up with that idea, and they asked me uh, to do it. And, I mean, it was perfect for me. The tires, make tire, the title was still belted. Man, you couldn't ask for nothing else then oh. other than the NIL. <laughs> yeah, yes. Oh, we're going to ask you yeah, about we'll, that as well. We'll Trust get into me. that for sure. I'm looking at those uniforms, Tim, and if I could pick one throwback uniform that BYU brought back, it would be the one that you had on in that picture. The royal mm-hmm. blue, the black outline, the drop shadow on the numbers. Are you cool if we bring back those unis from 95-96? Oh, man, I'm all with it. And if you bring those back, have to bring the all whites. Ooh, okay. Okay. Yes, sir. I, I yes, sir. Know. I don't know if you guys know the story of the all whites. They kind of banned the pants a little bit because they were showing too much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can understand why uh, they might have banned them, but that that's hilarious. Okay, so so Tim, take us back to that time. Take us back to '90s era BYU football. I said earlier in the show that was my. That was my era of BYU football. That's when I became a fan and became aware of BYU football and like the fandom just went in overload. It was the 90s football. So take us back. What was it like to be on the BYU football team in the 90s in that era? You you know, there was two different years. When I first got there, it was totally different than 96. Uh, We were kind of just a regular melting pot then, not as diverse as it is now. Uh, 96, we got fast. Uh, not only did we get fast, we got a lot of attitude and a lot of JC guys. And we just wanted to win, man. Everybody was dogging BYU and, you know, old guys this, old guys that. And, you know, so the mentality's kicked up. We had a lot of good guys that played uh, prior to me getting there. Shamir Brook, uh, Chad, a lot of guys had experience. 25-year anniversary of that 1996 team now that we're into 2021. Hard to believe it's been 25 years. But as you look back, do you have a favorite moment or memory from your playing days and experience with 1990s BYU football? I do. Um, The San Diego State interception, that was my first interception for a touchdown. My only one, to tell you the truth. And – there was a guy that recruited me out of JC that told me I was too small. Uh, he was a big recruiter. I can't remember his name right now. And as I was running down the sideline, I kind of noticed him standing on the sideline. So that was super bittersweet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, too small this as you score a touchdown. I, that was my mentality. Too small, too slow for what? So now – the teams that get probably the most uh, attention in BYU history is probably 84 and then 96. Those are the two teams that that get the attention, that everybody kind of gravitates to. You obviously know one of them very, very well. I, I don't want to ask you who you think is the better team. I want to ask you this question. Who mm-hmm. wins in a game between the 96 team and the 84 national title team? 96, hands down. <laughs> unequivocally 96 is what you're saying and unequivocally and i say that because i think 96 was the most versatile team in the history of byu well and when you think about 
all of the speed that you were talking about earlier between yourself and Omar Morgan, and then you got Chris Ellison in the defensive backfield, Shea Muirbrook, and the guy had five sacks in the Cotton Bowl in the first half, yeah. and he got six in the game for crying out loud. Ton of offensive guys went to the league as well. Chad Lewis, Atula Mealy, your receivers were outstanding. Sark was incredible. So, yeah, there's a real case for that. But like you said, it, it takes something special for all of those different parts to gel. What was the secret yeah. sauce that made that team gel? Well, I think after our junior year, um, I think we were seven and four. We lost a couple big games. We tied for the WAC championship, but we didn't get a bowl game. And I think that was the first in a while that BYU didn't go to a bowl game. And uh, we vowed we stayed that summer and everybody got bigger. Everybody got faster. Uh, we jailed, we hung out, didn't matter, Mormon, not Mormon. We just hung out and worked out and ran. And everybody held everybody accountable. Although Omar was a junior, there have been plenty of games. He told me to get my crap together. Um, <laughs> there's been games where, you know, I've told Shay to get it together and Shay told Chris, you know, and that went on on both sides. Tim, I have said multiple times, several times on the show, actually, I think Steve Sarkeesian is the most underrated BYU quarterback of all time. And he gets a lot of accolades, but I still don't know if he gets his just due for what he did as a quarterback at BYU. And unfortunately, you know, a lot of people don't necessarily know a whole lot about him because um, he's not around BYU very much. Most people know him from his post-BYU career as a coach. As a teammate and as a player, what was Sark like? Man, Sark was sweet. Uh, you know, he, like you said, man, I, I would have to agree with you 100%. Man, he was so underrated. Sark was efficient. Uh, what Sark did, the, uh, the BYU scheme of five receivers out, man, that just fit the whole scheme. And he had weapons, man. He, you know, we had two All-American tight ends. We had the number one punt return, kick return in the nation. Then we had 2,000-yard uh, running backs. And it was just... Sark was super underrated, and, and and you have to think about Sark. If Sark had four years at BYU and what he mm. what he would have done, yeah. And, and if '96 was today, we'd had a lot of guys get drafted. Tim McTyre is with us on BYU Sports Nation. I'm glad you brought up Ryan McKenzie and Ronnie Jenkins and James Dye. You're right. That team was absolutely loaded right now. Oh. The, there's the idea of a 12-team college football playoff floating out there, and it feels like it's a foregone conclusion that that thing is going to become official and that there will be a 12-team playoff expanding from four. If this were 96, how would that BYU team fare in a 12-team college football playoff? Um, we did good. Um, like I said, we're, we weren't afraid of anybody. We had super chips on our shoulders. Uh, and... <laughs> Tupac feud of the team. Uh, <laughs> I know Derek Stevenson always reminds me every time we talk about it how, um, I, I mean, I was a Tupac guy. That, that's what fueled me if it didn't anybody else. But I, I think we would have we would have went far. Um, like I said, man, we were just so loaded in, in all phases, special teams, offense, defense. It was nothing you can really do. It was us to lose or we have beat ourselves. The 2020 team also had quite a few players getting drafted into the NFL. They had five players, including obviously Zach Wilson, number two overall to the New York Jets. What was last season like as, as a Cougar to watch your alma mater uh, have the season that they did last year? Oh, man, it was fun, man. I, I love Zach Wilson, man. He just had so much moxie and, you know, um, and the guys. Last year was the first time that you could not squat on BYU receivers. Mm, love that statement. Love okay, uh, let's finish with this. Name, image, and likeness and how that impacts recruiting. What, what would that have been like in 1996 for you if name, image, and likeness and you could have made money on your own NIL? Man, I probably would have been in child support earlier. (laughs) 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 I know know it's funny, but that's kind of one of the things I worry about. Even 
both genders, and, I, and I'll say this, there's going to be so many vultures out for both sides. Um, that's that's kind of the one thing I worry about. Um, but I, I, I think I could have monetized off that, especially me eh, senior year, especially the tire contract. I, I think that would have been a given. Right? You would not have had to worry about tires your entire <laughs> life, Tim. <laughs> not at all. I would have had brand new Brand new tires on my old Mercury Cougar. <laughs> <laughs> Get that man some snow tires and some rims. Let's go. All right, Tim. I'll actually do. I wanted to ask you one more bef before we go, and that is why you think BYU's defensive backs last year and this year are taking that step toward what you had in the mid '90s. Um, I I think a little bit of it is scheme. Um. They they really get to uh, Fuyaki. Every now and then he brings a lot of pressure. I think it depends on rather who's the the Warner or the uh, the, the Kyle Van Noy guy, and I think that's kind of maybe going to Udo a little bit. Um, so that they they really like they they're comfortable and they show up. Like it's not it's not fancy. But they do enough not to lose. Like they don't, you know what I mean? Like consistently throughout a game, you know, you're gonna give up one or two. That's if you don't think you are, then you you're not a DB. And I think that they have a short memory outside of having a great coach, man. Gennaro is uh, amazing. And uh, I think they're getting to a point to where um, they're gonna be making plays pretty soon. Like you can see it to a point to where, you know, I expect some pick sixes. Um, or just more interceptions. And I think Gennaro's getting to that point. Tim, it's great to catch up with you, man. Uh, we waited too long. So we need to yeah. not wait another five, six years and, and do this on a more regular basis. Uh, we wish you the best, and uh, let's talk I again agree. soon. Absolutely. Tim McTire with us on BYU Sports Nation. He's great. Oh, he's always a crack up, man.